23-year-old Trinisha Dene Colomb, a promising young soldier with aspirations to join the Marines, was abducted from her home in Lafayette, Louisiana, on November 21, 2002. Her car, purse, and keys were found abandoned near the cemetery, where her beloved mother had been laid to rest just seven months earlier. Three days later, a hunter made a gruesome discovery in the woods of Scott, Louisiana, Danae's lifeless body. The scene was similar to that of the other victims of the Baton Rouge serial killer, a man who evaded capture and terrorized the city for months. But what set Danae apart was that she was the only known victim outside of Baton Rouge and the killer's usual target type. She was a strong and beautiful African-American woman. Investigators initially dismissed the possibility that Danae's murder was connected. But as details emerged about her life, it became clear that she fit the killer's profile in every way. A hunter would later recount seeing a white Chevrolet stepside pickup truck parked near Danae's abandoned car at the time of her disappearance. This detail matched descriptions of the killer's vehicle given by witnesses in previous cases. It is believed that Danae may have been visiting her mother's grave before being targeted by the killer. Perhaps he saw her alone and vulnerable and couldn't resist the opportunity to strike. The killer was described as an angry and controlling white male between 25 to 35 years old. But the truth, he was a black man, living with others and possibly working in a physically demanding job away from public interaction. He had a history of stalking and minor offenses and closely followed news coverage of his crimes. But despite his calculated nature, he ultimately succumbed to his impulsive urges and left behind a trail of bodies. Eventually, he would be identified as Derek Todd Lee or the Baton Rouge serial killer, responsible for numerous murders and rapes in the area before finally being brought to justice. Welcome back to No Tears for Black Girls. Today, we delve into the harrowing story of Trinacia Dene Colomb, a 23-year-old aspiring Marine whose dreams were tragically cut short. Abducted from her home in Lafayette, Louisiana, and found lifeless in the woods of Scott, Trinisha's case was initially dismissed as unrelated to the notorious Baton Rouge serial killings. However, as details emerged, it became evident that she fit the profile of Derek Todd Lee, the man behind the terror. Join us as we unravel the complex tapestry of Lee's violent history, his eventual capture, and the relentless hunt for justice that brought his deadly spree to an end. This is the tale of Trinisha Collum and the Baton Rouge serial killer. Born into a turbulent world on November 5, 1968 in St. Francisville, Lee's childhood was plagued by abuse and neglect at the hands of his stepfather while his mother turned a blind eye. Struggling with mental challenges, Lee was often ostracized and bullied by his peers, but it wasn't until the age of 13 that his troubled life took a dark turn. On November 8, 1981, Lee was arrested for breaking into a candy store and attacking a woman in front of his own mother. A few years later, he found himself in police custody again for suspicion of murder, but managed to evade conviction. He even resorted to burning his own car for insurance money, but it seems like the plan backfired. In 1988, Lee met Jacqueline Sims and they married in Solitude, Louisiana. However, their relationship quickly deteriorated as Lee became increasingly violent towards her. In 1998, something inside Lee snapped and he began a series of violent attacks against women. It all started with Randy Mabruer, whose body was never recovered. Over the next six years, six more women would fall victim to Lee's rage. Despite repeatedly getting arrested for other crimes, and carrying out affairs behind his wife's back, Lee continued to fly under the radar. But in May 2003, investigators finally made a breakthrough when DNA evidence linked Lee to his final victim, Carrie Yoder. After evading authorities by fleeing to Chicago and Atlanta with his family, Lee was finally apprehended thanks to the efforts of a joint FBI Metropolitan Atlanta Police Force team. 
As details about his extensive rap sheet came to light, the Baton Rouge community erupted in anger over how long it took for authorities to connect the dots and bring justice for Lee's previous suspected victims. In the end, justice was served as Lee was convicted for multiple murders and sentenced to life in prison. The case of the Baton Rouge serial killer will forever serve as a reminder of how even those who fly under the radar can still be brought to justice. Mebrewer's murder was just one in a string of violent attacks that rocked the city. Authorities scrambled to make sense of the chaos, but it wasn't until DNA evidence linked Lee to the crime that they could finally breathe a sigh of relief. However, their relief was short-lived as more victims were discovered, each one bearing Lee's twisted signature. As the case unfolded, Lee faced multiple charges, including seven counts of murder. The families of his victims were shattered and exhausted, forced to relive their loved one's gruesome deaths in court. But even with overwhelming evidence against him, Lee's defense team argued for leniency due to his low IQ. Despite their efforts, the jury saw through the facade and sentenced Lee to death. On death row, Lee experienced health issues and ultimately died while awaiting execution. His reign of terror had come to an end, but the scars he left behind on his victims and their families would never fully heal. And as for Lee's suspected other victim, Warner, her story remains unsolved. Yet another tragedy in this horrific tale. You know, tragic memories scarred their minds years ago, and today is another day that the family of these victims of Derek Todd Lee will never forget. The death row killer died this morning at a Zachary hospital. His sudden death was shocking to at least one family. James Sparvero begins our team coverage. It's bringing back memories. It's a happy day, but then it's a sad day because it brings up all the memories of what happened 12, 13 years ago. That's how long it's been since these men last saw 23-year-old Trinisha Denae Colomb. Sterling Colomb Sr., her dad, and Sterling Jr., her brother, are carrying mixed emotions. Kind of disbelief because I've been waiting for this for a long time, you know. They're happy to hear the killer is dead, but overwhelmed to revisit the case. When I first heard, I cried, and I didn't know if, it was a, if I was happy or sad. Danae, as she was best known, was found beaten to death in a field near Lafayette. Three days earlier, Lee kidnapped Danae while she was grieving in a cemetery over the recent loss of her mother. That was November 2002. It's been a long wait to get to the news today. He's not here anymore, not here to harm anybody anymore, nobody has to worry about him anymore. You know, uh, we can use our tax bill, like people would say, for something of better use. The Colombes say, like her father, Danae was in the military, serving about two years in the Army and planning to join the Marines. Very outgoing. She was outgoing and she, she liked to experiment things, travel. You know, she wanted to travel because she, been, she was teaching herself different languages. While her killer's time on this earth is up, her father, her brother, cannot call today closure. They say it's just not that simple. It can't be a closure. I, I don't see it as a closure because she's not with me. I know today we're going to get a lot of feedback, a lot of critics who will watch our coverage and say we're overdoing it. We're giving this man too much attention. Family members of a victim, what do you guys think about that? I basically don't want to see it anymore, me personally. You know, I wish, I wish it would just be a short story, bear him is over with. Even after all this is over it, you know, you know, people talking, oh, Derek Talley died, Derek Talley died. But we still have to live with the, the fact that our, our love one is gone. James Sparvero, WAFB, 9 News. Of course, much of this is for the victims. Trinisha Denae Cologne was the seventh woman. Lee is believed to have attacked. DNA evidence linked Todd to her murder. Thank you for tuning in to No Tears for Black Girls. This series is skillfully crafted by acclaimed writer and producer John Reedberg with the guidance of unapologetic host Samantha Paul. Catch new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on all major podcast platforms. You can listen anywhere, anytime. And if you truly enjoy our content, please leave a five-star rating and positive review. Remember to stay loved, stay blessed, and stay safe.